Hello everybody, this is Keith Clark from iDigital Medium and we're going to look at some spectrograph pictures from this past week. Somewhere around February 4th, things began to change, as many of you know. We've been doing pictures and sound for since 2007. It's a long time, uh, on and off. So we're just going to run through some of the pictures that have been taken in this last week. This is only, these are the pictures that I believe to be better than most, or these are the ones that I would attempt to show to someone to try to um, give them enough evidence to assess whether or not they thought it was of interest. The reason why everything changed was we are using a new spectrograph piece of software called Sonic Visualizer. It's free. It works on Windows and Linux and Mac. Yay for that. We'll get, to, we'll get to that later on, but for right now, we're just going to go ahead and go through some pictures. This is a picture that was inverted. It was originally in blue and white, as you've seen a lot of the pictures recently. I was looking at it and adjusting some settings, and I realized that when it was inverted, I could see more of the picture than I could see previously. This is the way we were working for the last 10 years, roughly, where you would have a little face like this one in the corner above me. Not very easy to see uh, a challenge for most people, which is why it didn't really catch on. This is a picture that's pretty rough. You can't really see much of anything other than it looks like there might have been a portrait type photo here in the center. And then we jumped light years ahead. Well, after this picture. This is another picture that was taken in the last week. And here we go to our pictures. The reason I have the picture so small is so that you could see the perspective. If you were up close and it was maximized, you would not be able to see what I'm trying to demonstrate. This is the original picture on the right. This is also the original picture. And this is the original picture with a little bit of blur and a little bit of brightness and contrast added to it. And now we continue, and you start to see why I've been getting so excited. This is our live Facebook stream on February 4th. I know you're used to me just playing videos and just leaving them play, and it's just static and noise. Um, things are a little bit different now. Finally, some people are able to begin seeing what I've been describing to you. Still not clear enough for me to uh, try to convince the world, but it's pretty close. Let me move this over to where you can see it. Look at this. It's beautiful. Again, this is the original face. Same original face over here. Oops, right there. And this is with a little bit of contrast. And I, this is the current process that I'm using on all these pictures, and these appear live on their TV screen. Here we have someone in a tie, in a suit and tie, which is not unusual for ITC photographs. It's actually quite common. Some people want to appear uh, looking their best, I assume. This picture is a little bit harder to see. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, that would help. Okay, after that little adjustment, you can see a little bit better. This was a little harder to see, but this person definitely has a big smile. Uh, lately, sometimes I've been asking them to please attempt to smile rather than just take a picture with your mouth open. <laughs> they know that. We don't want to scare people now, do we? So if we want people to be aware, to learn more about spirit or what we don't know yet, um, it'd be nice to have positive education. This is one of the best pictures in my mind of the last week. Uh, it definitely will probably be the thumbnail for this video. This is me attempting to edit. I should have just taken this out of here. Uh, edit as in only leave this photo but make the area around it dark so it appears that this was me experimenting obviously that experiment did not work out this is let me see to make this smaller all right our face is right here in this particular frame notice it's got some pixelation there's not much I can do about that at this time this is a very cool photo because as you look, I want to zoom in, 
You can see the eyes and you can see some depth to it. Again, if anybody, for anybody that doesn't know, you can watch pictures like this live on the stream right now, 24 hours a day. If you're sitting at your couch, pull up YouTube on your TV, or your tablet, or your laptop, or your desktop, and you can watch and receive pictures that are being sent through a radio by these people so that you can see them. Who are they? What do they want? What is their purpose? Well, we have guesses, but we're not quite sure yet. I think many of you have good ideas. And on to a picture that was taken February 5th, the following day. Not as clear. Um, didn't work out exactly as they planned, but there was enough of a formation for me to decide to keep it. Okay, here we have gentleman around here. We have another one over here. One of the things about these faces, and there's one here, this is what's going to confuse people a lot, so it's going to need to be some education. Energy doesn't take any particular shape or perspective. It's not straight up right. It's not right-sided. It's not this way. It's not this way. It's not this way. It's every 360 degree angle you can imagine is how energy presents itself. Which means the pictures are not only going to be seen straight up, they're also going to be seen different angles, they're going to be seen upside down, they're going to be seen from every angle. There's picture behind picture behind picture. This is the way ITC photos work, this is common. And so, unfortunately, the diff challenging part is if you show somebody a picture, they'll see a picture and say, well, I see this one. And then they'll see something different than you. Which means we're not at the point yet to where it can be considered evidential, but we're getting close. After we confirm that they are indeed faces, next question is, who are they? What purpose does it serve? For now, since we've been working at this for 10 years, I think I can safely say a good assumption could be made that the purpose is to educate people on the continuity of life. Here's a picture over here. This is pretty cool. Let me zoom in on that a little bit for you. If there's anybody watching that's not familiar with ITC and the spirit and all those types of things, all these names we give to experiments, there's nothing to be afraid of. There's nothing to be scared of. This is normal. This is nature. This has always been. We are just finding ways to use technology to be able to uh, make it easier. Here's a person that didn't turn out quite right. We don't know how they form their faces yet. We don't know if, if they just imagine how they look or used to look. If they lived here on Earth in another life, you see there's a lot of assumptions that we don't have the answers for. But a lot of faces will be distorted, um, not fully formed. Sometimes they'll be sideways. Their heads will be misshapen. And so we don't really know um, if everything we're seeing are faces of people, if there are other life forms. Here we have a gentleman on the left. And we have another gentleman on the right. Let's zoom in. And so after 10, 11 years of working with this, as you can imagine, I'm quite excited to be able to be showing you this. It does take the eyes a little bit of adjusting to get used to looking at these because well they're not clear obviously and as I said energy does not conform to our perspective so just because this face appears to be bluish bluish white and the background appears to be black doesn't mean that's the only picture there if we inverted this we would find out that this would be a composite of another picture so at this stage nobody's really right nobody's really wrong when it comes to pointing out a picture people are going to see different things but I consider this highly successful especially considering where we've been here's an interesting picture on the left um, looks like they have hair that short or stands up 
Face is a little elongated. Looks like could be a young man, but we don't know. Another point I made in a experiment yesterday is that we do not, I do not think it to be good protocol or uh, good measure to try to attach a personality to every face that you see. It's human nature. We all want to do it. I'd say until we can actually have the pictures clear enough to where we can see if the person we're trying to say it is uh, is compared to a picture and it's a perfect match, then I can see. But uh, please just, for those of you that do find this interesting and do want to continue with experiments, realize that we're still in the infant stages. And so the slower we go, the more open-minded we are, the more likely this is to be accepted by others. I gotta say, if it keeps going at this rate, this is one of my favorite pictures. So this is three quarters of a man's face. He's looking up, this is his nose, his mustache. We can see his actual eyes. Um, that's the thing, these pictures aren't clear, so we don't know, is this an ear? Is it a man with cat ears? We really don't know. Um, <laughs> my point being, it's too early to come to any conclusions. But what I can tell you is, they are faces. I will venture to say that much. This is a beautiful photo. I mean, look at it. Look at this. The fact that they can do this alone is amazing enough. Unbelievably amazing. This almost looks like the way a photo appears in a television screen. I'm going to keep zooming in. I imagine it's pixelated on your end, but look at that. That is unbelievable. Once the pictures get good, one of the first things people are going to say is he's faking it. So then, I'm going to get to prove it, which is not an issue. Could I fake pictures like this? Yes, of course I could. We have computers. We can do anything. But uh, that seems counterproductive. If I, I, you know, I would have done that 10 years ago if, if I had that desire. Here's another face. Long hair. And we're back to where we began. Just to give a brief explanation of where to find the stream, if you were to go to youtube.com and if you were to type in iDigital Medium, you would see this picture here. Now, it's going to change because it's kind of a weird picture. I'm no longer going to call it Group Thought Energy Experiment, which is super vague on purpose. This is what it looks like. Just a quick demonstration for those that do not know. If you're on a desktop, you can DVR back and forward two hours, so backwards two hours. Uh, if it was, had already been playing, that is. It has to be able to buffer or cache that amount. If you're on a desktop, you can actually change the speed, which could be super cool, but also super difficult. For example, if I wanted to view pictures really fast and go like this, I wanted to cover a bunch of time really fast. You can hit the space bar to stop and start video. You can also click on the screen to start and stop video. And if you see something and you miss it, you can simply stop the video by pressing the space key or clicking on the screen and then taking your mouse and moving it right back here, a very small amount. This is very hard to do on on phones and tablets because it might move it back two minutes and then now you're watching the whole two minutes over again. And you can also watch it slower. You can slow this down and watch it at half the speed so you wouldn't miss anything. See, in this case I just missed it because I have it playing so fast. We have a face over here. This is live, real time, exactly what I'm playing to you. This timestamp you see right here is always my local time on the stream computer, so that's 10.37 p.m. at night. It's always current. It's always correct. The stream is always live. There are never recordings. And that is how you view faces and sound. This is Keith Clark. See you next time.